Do you know who's an idiot? It's me. A few years ago. I mean, I mean weeks. Well, double idiot, there it is. A few weeks ago, I made a video where I completed this puzzle, Seek and Destroy 3. You can watch it if you haven't. Our goal here was to find and shred the smallest data cube in the room. I've done this a couple of ways and I really tried going for the optional challenges. But basically, this is the same puzzle as the two before this. The difference being we need to find the smallest data cube in the room and not just in each column. But the core of the code is still the same. The people walk up in their columns, find the minimum in each of those, then bring the minimum down. And this person then sorts through all the data cubes and finds the minimum among these minimums. But as you see, it takes three seconds longer than it should. The optional size challenge wasn't as big of an issue, but this I just couldn't figure out. The weird thing is that I actually did complete the optional speed challenge, but I don't know how or when. What I try to play with is the positioning of this shredder person. So at first I would let her wait on the left side and then find a minimum among these minimums, but I thought that having her wait on the right side might actually be better in some cases. I'm gonna pause it after they come down there. Now if you look at this, she can start searching from the left side or from the right side. What is the longest distance she actually has to travel? So if she starts at the left side, she's gonna go all the way to the right, so let's say length of L, and then she's gonna go all the way back and take the minimum along the way, so 2L, two times this distance. On the other hand, if she starts on the right side, it's true that she has to go there first, but that doesn't waste any time, because before these people get down, she's already on the right side. So she has to go all the way to the left, which again is L, but then she might only have to take a couple steps and take one of these numbers, let's say. Then that's gonna be like a quarter of the way through, and then back again. So that's smaller than the other way around. But I said we have to take worst case. So worst case is she starts on the right side, goes all the way to the left. This number here is gonna be the minimum. That's all the way to the right again, and then to the left again. So this isn't optimal after all. In this case, she goes all the way to the left and then grabs that number in the middle, which is really quite far. But that's what's making this variability. These green bars represent the time it takes to execute this program over 25 random tests. So each green bar is a random test. And sometimes, as you see here, for example, it's really fast, but sometimes it's really slow. I've tried having a stand on the left side as well, didn't help. Well, I received a really great suggestion from a subscriber of mine, which was to make her job a little easier and let these people sort themselves out a bit first. So the beginning is still the same. The people find their minimums, bring them down, but then some of them just leave. Well, how is that possible? It's possible because each of these people in the bottom row does this check right here. If my item is higher than the item of the person on the right, or it is higher than the person on the left, I just go away. In this case, they step to this wall. So they leave, meaning this shredder person now doesn't have to check as many numbers. Obviously, this code got a lot more complicated because originally we would say, is there a worker under you and keep walking? And once you reach a no worker under you, you just pick up the minimum. And in this case, you can't do that because sometimes there aren't any workers which still means you haven't reached the end. That being said, she just checks for workers, remembers whether she's already reached a shredder or not, I believe. Once she sees the shredder, which is here, she just takes the minimum and that's it. She only had to check three numbers. Many more commands, but it is faster. Exactly by one second. Not great. It's pretty terrible, right? Is there perhaps a way to make this even more efficient. Well, yes, there is. But what can we do? Well, as you see here, the issue is that she waits on the right side, the people leave, she goes all the way to the left, checking all the numbers, and once she finds the minimum, 
she has to go all the way back to get it. That's not great at all. Now it's at 34 seconds. Okay, but still the average not looking great. So what we can do is take these people and shuffle them to the left once the people with the non-minimums leave. It should look like this. The people go down, check their surroundings, leave, and then they start shuffling left. The shredder person doesn't even have to check any numbers. Just check for the shredder, and then the person closest to the shredder is gonna have the minimum for sure. And as you see, that's 28 seconds. A ridiculous improvement. Now let me explain a little better. All these people have picked up the minimum in their columns and they are now executing this command. If your item is higher or equal than the one to the person on the right, or it's higher than the person on the left, you step away. Otherwise, you step left. So here about half the people should step away. Let's see. And they do four people step away, four people step left. And they repeat this process. So either there is no person next to you, you step left, or there is a person to the left of you. In this case, that's gonna be interesting, two nines. Let's see. Not two nines, I messed up. <laughs> Let me try again. This is gonna be even better. Four sixes, that's insane. What luck. So this person on the right just keeps stepping left because there's no one to compare the numbers with. This person stays there, nowhere to step. This person steps closer and now do the checking again. Is your number higher than the number of the person on the left? It's not because it's equal. But what about this person? Higher or equal than the number on the right? Well, it is. So this grandma here is going to leave. Step to memory four. That's it. She's She's gone. Same thing happens here. So if there are many numbers which are equal, only the rightmost person is gonna remain at the end. Why is that? Isn't that a little dumb? Well, the reason we're doing all of this is to make sure this shredder person reaches the shredder at the same time as the minimum reaches this spot next to the shredder. It basically works as a timer of sorts. We could let the shredder person wait here, but then we wouldn't know when to actually pick up the number. Is it already the minimum or is there someone else still walking to the left? We wouldn't know. So the shredder person has like a boolean value here in memory one. Have you met a person or not? So once this person comes down, the shredder person is gonna set memory one to one. Here, if there's a worker under you, set to one. And since many people leave, about half of them, she takes two steps every time. And once she reaches the shredder, she simply takes from the person that's right here and gives to the shredder. So you see, she's going a little faster, taking two steps every time, which is just enough time for these people to leave and the minimum to be left right here. Now with this optimization, I feel really optimistic that I might be able to complete this level as well. Well, not complete, I've already completed it, but the optional challenges, eh, not so much. Five or fewer commands, that's easy. But seven or fewer seconds, I've only managed 10. This is one of the earliest levels, and the goal is for us to fill the data gaps in each row. Doesn't matter the order. So as you see, the people can just take their data cube, keep walking down and place it in the gap between two other data cubes. I've deliberately changed the tab here, so I didn't really see the code I used originally. Pick up the data cube, then take at least four steps. Or maybe three, let's do three. And then there's gonna be a jump to the fourth step. So basically take four steps. We're gonna have a jump here. If you are not standing on a data cube, you might consider placing it down, right? So then you check if to the left of you there is a data cube. You might want to check if there's one on the right side as well, but doesn't really matter, left side is enough. In that case, you drop your data cube and that's it. But if you are not standing on a data cube, meaning you are in between the rows, you just take another step. Let's see how fast this solution is, first of all. They slowly fill out the gaps, no issue there, 10 seconds. It's probably similar to the code I've already had before. 
Now, the thought in my head is about switching those two if statements. So I'm going to do if to the left of you there is a data cube, meaning you are in the row of data cubes, you check if you are not standing on a data cube. If you're not standing on a data cube, you drop yours. But otherwise, you should take two steps. So else, step down and why not step down again? This step moves here. This is not needed and this should work. Four steps down, you are in this row, you are standing on a data cube. So we don't even need this if statement. You're always going to be standing on a data cube or on an empty space and then you drop it. So come here, there is a data cube under you, so you take two steps. There still is a data cube and so on and here is where you drop it. That's gonna work, come on. Yes, it's working, it's working. Come on, that's gotta be faster. <laughs> yes, six seconds. Well, who's the idiot now? Probably still me.